Okay, so now we're going to do some Python. I'm Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com, and it is now time to clear so we don't have a mess to look at. LS to remind us what we're looking at. It is the essentially empty directory from cloning a freshly created GitHub repository and telling it to put the readme in there, which we had done our first edit and commit, and that's the project thus far. Our decision now is going to have ramifications for the whole rest of the life of the project, so we make our first decision with care. We need a new file where we need to run some Python code. The name that I choose for this file tends to have staying power. You can change it a month or two down the line, but by that time the damage is done. You're going to be thinking about the core kernel seed part of this project by whatever name you choose right now. And I chose Gropy as the overarching project, the GitHub repository name, because I wanted it to be sort of like grepping, but you're groping. And a lot of a tradition in Python projects is to end it with PY, web PY, cherry PY, everything PY. And you can't really do grope PY. It's like strange. So I just went with gropey in the sense of scrapey, a kind of crawler, screen scraper, scrapey. It works really well when you get the PY in there. So I did a little bit of a compromise and I'm happy with PEY. So I believe that that is a strong enough identity to be the first file we work on. So I am going to vim gropy.py. That seems like the right thing, right? I wouldn't do gro.py except perhaps for a shorter file name. What has a stronger identity here? What would you rather be looking at for the next five years. What I just had on the screen were this. This is short, punchy. Sure, the project's called Ropey, but the only difference between these two that you're looking at is kind of just in your mind. They both spell Ropey. So I like this. And the first code we lay down is going to be simply stepping through a dictionary object. So I don't even want to give variable names yet. I'm gonna, I don't want to make any arbitrary decisions yet except for stepping through uh, a library. So in, whoops, insert mode for each Let's see, I gotta figure out how to address uh, for each item. Let's just try item in, and we're gonna give it a, a dictionary. Uh, I'm gonna have number colon string just for testing. One colon foo, two colon bar, Three colon lumberjack. And a colon at the end because you're saying for each item in this dictionary object, do the following. Four loops always have a colon at the end, just like uh, doing a, a def of a function. And we'll just say print, and we'll do uh, parentheses just to be future compatible. Uh, print item. Escape colon W for write. And using my new trick, I can just exit to a shell. And then I can do Python, Gropy. 
and I have a syntax item for each item in invalid syntax. Maybe item is a reserved keyword for each X. No, I think I'm overcomplicating it. Uh, the, each keyword might not be necessary. Or item in, that's how that's how uh, terse Python is. There, one, two, three, I'm getting the keys. So if we wanted the values instead, we can just, how would we do that? We'd have to refer over to the uh, anonymous object, so I'm going to uh, move that up here. Okay, now it's doing the same thing, but now we have a named uh, object that we can plug a key into the index for. So instead of printing item, we are going to print sticking item as the key into my dict. And in this way, we should get the values printing instead of the keys. Foo bar lumberjack, voila! So just take a look over uh, at what you're looking at here to make sure you understand. Um, I am doing an assignment I am assigning the dictionary uh, key value pair set inside that curly bracket to the variable named my dict. And then I iterate through my dict for each item in it. I am printing what you get when you plug the key value that's held in variable named item in as the key to the dictionary named my dict, and you get the values out. If I were to add uh, a four, I work all day. There you go. Stepping through the uh, values in a dictionary object. Nailing this concept is so important that I made this my initial uh, commit on this project to forever remind you that we're dealing with what will become a dictionary of dictionaries and that'll be the next commit. So. Uh, we quit, we get status, you can see we added the one file, so we get add that file name, and now we get commit message, added ropey file, and uh, the seed for the uh, entire idea to 
That is, that's really the kernel. That's a seed for the idea that rows can be represented as uh, dictionary objects very easily. Get push. And uh, that's it. I guess we could take a look at it in Git. And we can see, there it is. There's the file. Thanks for joining me. The journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. And if you want to share this first step for people you know who should be learning along with you, now is a great time to share this video. And don't forget to subscribe. Talk to you soon.